analysis on the diet and workout of Cristiano Ronaldo. Now, he's probably the best athlete of all time if you look at his track record. So what I don't want this to come across as is a, a way of saying he's been doing it wrong all this time. Um, he's a much su more superior athlete to me, but I think that a lot comes into it. Um, genetics, talent, skill, applying yourself, determination, discipline. But sometimes people can get all those things right, but they can get something slightly wrong as well. So they might have the diet that is a bit less than optimal. Um, I've not seen this video yet, but my brother's told me to have a look at it and see what I think. So here we go. Ronaldo is known for being one of the physically fittest football players, with Spanish newspaper Diario AS revealing that his Juventus medical last year declared he has the physical capacity of a 20-year-old player at the age of... It's pretty epic. I mean, I feel about 90 right now, so whatever he's doing must be somewhat right. 34. The results stated that he had a 7% body fat, which is around 3% less than the average professional footballer, and a muscle mass of 50%. I wasn't sure when he said 7% then, I thought that's, that's quite lean, um, not many people get below that, but then you see this guy here, with those like, I don't know, cross striated chest, um, veins going through his shoulders, delts with zero fat on them, um, internal, external obliques, forearms sticking out, yeah, this guy's in shape, he's, um, he's definitely in peak conditioning. 4% more than an average footballer. Additionally, Most footballers aren't 11% body fat, I'm telling you this, they're not, they're about 15-20%. At least if you look at the, the pro ones. Um, most barely have abs, so probably 10-15% some of them, most probably more than that, if you look at the, the broad spectrum of foot footballers anyway. He was declared the fastest player at the World Cup last year, with a top speed of 34 kilometers per hour. At a U that is very fast. Um, I believe my top speed at the time when I was younger, and I was a sprinter, um, probably age 14, 16 years old, I believe it was about 28, 29 kilometers per hour. So this guy is fast. That is insane speed. At his press conference, he said, I'm good emotionally, physically. That's why the way I came here makes me proud. I'm different from everyone else, from all the players who are 32, 33, or 34 years old. So. People probably watch this sort of video and think, oh, what an arrogant absolute hole you know um but think what has he achieved in his 34 years of being alive and i think this video is a bit old now so maybe 37 or something at this point um i think he's earned the right to say what he's just said very good well how has cristiano ronaldo reached the apex of physical fitness here's a full breakdown of it so this is quite an interesting exercise it's as if he's trying to catch himself and use like a reflex sort of movement like you would in football so I can see how this would be useful um, now would you do it on repeat I don't know I always kind of think training specificity is important um, as you train so you should perform um, but I can see how this may be useful at least for learning these sort of movements but doing it in a direct sort of repetitive plane like this um, doesn't necessarily match what would be performed in a real life scenario. Teetotalers fitness and diet regimen. Ronaldo is known for being a hard trainer with a highly disciplined fitness regime. The player, who has a home gym, frequently shares photos and video. Yeah, wall sits are quite interesting. Um, they're a good way to get some blood to your, your thighs without actually loading your spine. Um, I don't think they're going to be like good for building massive amounts of muscle. I think there is an element of load that you need to apply. Um, but yeah, for some balance, some stability, maybe it could be useful. Videos of himself working out on Instagram using machines, doing circuits, and swimming on top of his regular football training. I like that he seems to enjoy all this stuff. He's um, happy doing it. You know, like some athletes, you see them sort of on the treadmill or go for a run or something. They're like, oh, this is horrible. You know, I think you do have to enjoy what you're doing, especially if you're a hard training athlete. He explained to Goal.com, in training, we do a few laps of the pitch, stretching, and cardio exercises to warm up. 
Make sure you do something similar in your training, even if it is jogging to the gym or a warm up on the treadmill or bicycle. I think warm up should match what the training is that you're doing, um, personally. I think that, for example, myself as a bodybuilder, if I'm trying to work my chest on a given day, uh, my warm up might be a chest exercise. Now, I understand in football you're running around a lot, so yeah, you kind of would be doing a running style of exercise. Um, I don't know if going for a long run would be the best thing, because you don't always run when you're performing in football. Um, I think it's important to be warm, have you know blood flow to your muscles. I want to say blood flow, I mean you're not coming in from the freezing cold and going for a sprint. You know it means you're you're easing into it gently. Um, so that's what I kind of think towards that kind of warm up. He added, "We do a lot of sprinting drills in training, and they can be incorporated into your workout, whether you are in the gym or outdoors. Try and add it to every workout you." Yeah, it's a good point. Um, ideally, like he, I think he's doing here, go out, go outdoors and do it if you can. Um, it's going to be much better for your mental health, breathing fresh air, avoiding those blue light, um, UV rays sort of thing in the, the gyms. Those gyms and that light is toxic, honestly. It sounds a bit over the top, but when you've when you trained inside and outside, you let me know what you think. You'll notice a difference, I think. In the gym, however, Ronaldo does cardiovascular training, including running and rowing. It's good he's doing this sort of thing as in, he's trying to elevate his heart rate, getting like a fixed position, you know, like he's about to tackle someone or cover the ball sort of thing. Um, now using his hands like that, I don't know how that would be f similar in football. I can't think of a scenario when he's going to be using his hands in that manner in football. And weights. Ronaldo has shared a few pictures of himself using a number of machines, most notably a leg extension machine, to help build up his quads. Ronaldo has also previously shared a video of himself doing a small circuit. I've seen the thighs in this guy, like from the side, like the quad ham separation. That's quite... Normally people have that, that's quite cool to see. Um, yeah, he's doing like a, a Russian twist, sitting on, a, I believe, a BOSU ball. Probably quite good for your core stability, actually. Um, yeah, I think specificity of training is important, um, and sometimes you can emulate some things you do on the pitch in a slightly more precise manner. Um, so if he's doing a lot of rotation when he's, I don't know, trying to pivot around the ball, yeah, I can kind of see how that would be useful. Um, but I wouldn't be centering his training around this sort of thing. I wouldn't be doing a workout like this. It might be this is one part of a circuit that he's doing. But we'll see as the video goes on what he's, what he's up to. As his girlfriend, Georgia Rodriguez, ran on a treadmill in the background, which included sitting on a BOSU ball while doing reps with a medicine ball before launching into a series of crunches on the ball. Beyond his workout routines, Ronaldo also puts a huge emphasis on recovery, saying, I have good back... Well, uh, playing with his pet, not on his front, probably watching TV or something, and he's got his bird, giving him a leg massage with those um, fairy gun things. It's pretty cool. Yeah, he's living the life there. You can tell he's quite happy and content. I find often the best therapies the ones that you do yourself that involve relaxing in some way. Um, so yeah, it's pretty cool to see. And I don't know when this video, how much they were, but the fairy guns back then were quite expensive. So it's nice to see now you can buy these things. Um, they're quite useful, actually. I, th I find a lot of actual bodybuilders use these sort of things to um, help with blood flow prior to training. Um, I think they could be useful. Training, how to rest. This is why I've been on top of the game for many, many years. In fact, prior to a game, he... I always tell you guys this, like, the importance and significance of recovering well. You've got the best footballer and probably one of, if not the best athletes of all time, telling you the same thing. Listen carefully here. It's very important. Um, this bath looks... I think it's a cold bath, but we'll see. I quite like the, the heat from a warm bath, personally. Um... I find it stimulates blood flow, especially if you've been quite inactive. I think there's like a regulation sort of aspect you can use to hot or cold therapies. He insists on taking a hot bath for about 20 minutes, according to Nike, to relax his muscles. He has also previously spoken at length about the importance of sleep. He told Goal.com, 
Proper sleep is really important for getting the most out of training. I go to bed early and get up early, especially before matches. Yeah, I'm not surprised. He's probably trying to maximize his hormonal output in terms of being as naturally compatible as possible. Um, getting the melatonin secreted at the night time when it's dark, getting up early when it's light. Um, depends on the world, where in the world he is and what the sunrise time is and things like that. But yeah, I can see a clear indication here that um, getting up on time, starting your day right, is important. Sleep helps muscles recover, which is really important. He has also shared photos of himself sitting in ice baths. Strength. He's got a better physique than most of the guys we see on like those men's health covers. He's probably been on like a thousand covers anyway, but I just want to point that out. It's pretty insane for a footballer. You know, he's not a bodybuilder, so it's it's incredible. Catching to cool down and swimming as part of this recovery. Cristiano Ronaldo diet. Exercise goes hand in hand with Ronaldo's strict diet plan. Sees the footballer avoid alcohol. Avoid alcohol, I believe you said. You guys know what I'll say here. Um, I have to say it for completeness, but calories are a measurement of heat, not the food contained within, not the energy contained within food that the human body digests and deals with. Um, it's a different currency altogether. But yeah, 3,000, that doesn't sound like a lot if you're looking at. A mixed diet, um, to like food labels, that's not much food. Um, I guess he is shredded out of his gourd, so it's probably why he's maintained that kind of like leanness. But, um, yeah, I'm a bit skeptical here about what's going to happen next. Seeing people to eat regularly, he said, a good workout must be combined with a good diet. I eat a high protein diet with lots of whole grain carbs, whole grain. Um, for anyone that is unsure about whole grains, look who's been funding these studies around the benefits of whole grains and tell me that it's got no conflict of interest. Um, whole grains signifies that the food has a high fiber content. In no nutritional textbook will it ever say that an essential nutrient is fiber. They'll say water, they'll say protein, you know, amino acids. And they'll say fat, fatty acids, uh, vitamins, minerals, you know, things like that. Um, carbohydrates don't come into that model of essential. Neither do the fiber. Not one. Not one gram ever, as Barkay would say. Fruits and vegetables, and avoid sugary foods, he continued. Beyond alcohol, he has previously said he steers clear of sugary sodas and processed foods. For those hitting the gym on a frequent basis, he continued, if you train regularly, it's important to keep energy levels high to fuel your body for better performance. I sometimes eat up to six smaller meals a day to make sure I have enough energy to perform each session at top level. I can see that may be useful if you're training several times per day, but I don't see at his level where, or any level really, where you'd need to train multiple times per day. Um, Granted, not every day you're going to be doing football training. Um, so you're going to be using maybe swimming as a modality. A bit easier in the joints. You might be doing a circuit training in the gym. Um, with relevant specifics sort of exercises to emulate what we're doing on the pitch. Um, six meals. Or I'm not sure. I think you could get the same nourishment out of just a few. Maybe two or three. Um, I don't know. Then that's the problem when you have a. A diet containing lots of carbohydrates. You're not needing more meals to become because you become addicted to sugar. Um, not just mentally because you like sweets and I don't know Doritos or whatever, but you your body tells you feed me more. I need more glucose because the peaks and trough in your blood glucose are all over the shop, all over. Um, you don't get this with a carnivore diet, funny enough. Um, I mean, I I speak from experience here. I used to eat six meals per day. I can now eat three sometimes. Um, four, generally speaking, is what I'm currently at. I'm very in inactive at the moment, but yeah. And I'm eating a lot more than this gentleman. Um, so, I don't know, something to think about here. It's um, food for thought, so to speak. His favorite dish is a Portuguese cod dish called bacalhau abras, which includes onions, thinly sliced potatoes, and scrambled eggs, according to Gold. Though alcohol is not one of his vices, Ronaldo is a fan of fresh juices and coffee, according to Labrador. The chef. Hmm. 
I suspect these might be using coffee for the caffeine um, to give him some artificial energy um, in the respect that he's having lots of sugar at multiple times throughout the day his energy is constantly crashing he's also very lean um, evidently and he also has lots of meals so his, his blood sugar is all over the shop so no wonder why he's drinking coffee and no wonder why he's supplementing his diet with lots of sugar um, I won't go into it in detail in this video but all carbohydrates turn to sugar um, especially if they're from a well, any source actually but the thing about carbohydrates is especially from plants um, so any sugar they'll um, they'll they'll convert the amount of um, deuterium in your body to a much higher level deuterium blah, blah. deuterium is a mitochondrial inefficiency thing without getting too scientific um, the high the concentration is of your body through high plant sugary foods the less efficient your body runs simple as that Jeff said Ronaldo is fond of pear apple or pineapple juice and drinks multiple cups of coffee speaking to eat for goals the football player also said he drinks still mineral water and other juice I like that he advocates for like the still mineral water and stuff because um, I was watching a I think it was like a press conference with him before and he had a bottle of coke or something in front of him and he's like i think he just threw it on the ground and said no don't drink this drink water instead put the bottle on the thing and then walked off something like that um it's clear he is trying to consciously make good um health decisions so yeah good guy this is including mango and strawberry with banana he's not averse to a sports drink to recharge during training saying i stay hydrated with a sports drink that gives me energy for training and matches it has a mix of carbohydrates that boosts endurance and is lower than many other sports drinks and sugar it all all carbohydrates turn to sugar i just mentioned this but um kind of contradictory um it doesn't seem to make sense to me he's trying to get more carbohydrates in but with less sugar but sports drinks, you'd want them to be as efficient as possible. So by omitting the sugar content of them and having more carbohydrates, you're slowing down the digestion. And it's not going to fuel you, supposedly, any quicker. Um, so his nutritionist here, if they've been advising him of this, needs to be um, properly vetted, I think. Also contains electrolytes to help with hydration and vitamin B12 that fights fatigue. Ronaldo broke down what exactly he has for breakfast to eat for goals, saying that on the morning prior to a game, he fills up on cereals with milk, all kinds of fruit, and of course bread. He said, food is the food. I think he could have just eaten a bigger meal the day before. Like, granted, he's not fat adapted. He's not going to be able to tolerate um, three meals a day like me. You know, he'd have to transition to a similar diet. That's, that's fair enough. Um... I guess one thing to mention here is one objection he might have to doing a diet like I'm doing is that it's going to take him a while to adapt to it. Um, now he makes his money as a competitive athlete through frequent training, frequent competition. Um, you know, he's got different sponsorship of obligations that might mean that he can't quite do something like I'll be doing for diet. But still, I mean, I hope looking forward into the future that he'll adjust his diet to match what is appropriate for our species which is a proper human diet as vague as it sounds it means you're eating meat and animal fat some dairy some eggs fish things like that as well that can be useful but um yeah fuel for my performance if you don't use the right fuel you cannot perform at top level given that he's busy training managing his cr7 lifestyle business keeping up with his sponsorships and holidaying with his family he doesn't always have time to cook for himself he told Eat for Goals, I am lacking time, and eat often at the club's restaurant or elsewhere with my friends. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to the channel. He seems to have quite a balanced approach to this. Um, he's conscious of eating meals that are with family, enjoying it. I think that's fair enough. I mean, I do the same, so I can't really criticise that aspect of his diet. But um, yeah, these sort of videos aren't really to, just to say, oh, this guy got it wrong and he's an idiot. It's more just to say, you know, this is what he is doing right, this is what he might be doing wrong. Um, now, I am qualified to speak on these topics in nutrition. When it comes to body composition, when it comes to athletic performance, that is my specialism. Um, 
I do have experience in these fields. I have competed in some aspects at an elite le level, so I can talk about some of these things. Um, and granted, I'm not the best footballer in the world, but hopefully people will watch this video and maybe get some ideas that maybe not everything that people are being told about nutrition is completely true. Um, if you look at myself, many others, following the carnivore diet, we're achieving what we're achieving in the complete absence of plant foods. Think about it.